Welcome to Good Game Pocket Edition, our slimmed down show for gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Barjo. This week on the show, we found an excuse to fire up an old school LAN party with the release of Defense of the Ancients 2, or Dota 2. Smash this tower. Smash it. Okay, running. Running. Oh, no. running. <laughs> it's always yes, that was an intense MOBA training experience. But before we get into all of that, let's jump into the Mushroom Kingdom and see what those Mario Brothers are up to. New Super Luigi U is DLC for New Super Mario Bros. U on the Nintendo eShop. Though you can also get it from stores as a standalone game. Yeah. As you can see, it's pretty traditional Nintendo platforming. But this differs from a typical Mario game in that Luigi's levels are shorter and far more difficult. And of course, Mario is completely absent. I have to say, I found his slippery controls really frustrating. He doesn't turn on a dime like Mario, and they've done this to add difficulty. That plus the levels are jammed with more enemies, and they've added a time limit. Oh, oh. There are a ton of levels though, and that's good. It's just not as innovative as we'd like Nintendo to be at this point with the Wii U. Oh. I gave it six out of ten rubber chickens. It was six and a half from me. Now, Telltale's Walking Dead series won some pretty impressive accolades last year, and I think it's safe to say that many are eagerly awaiting series two. But to bridge the gap, in the meantime, we have the DLC 400 Days. Named for taking place over that length of time, 400 Days is five short stories. Each is centered on a different character during a different point in time in the zombie apocalypse. And it's possible to play these stories in any order. I found it great to be back in this world, Barjo. Each story only takes about 20 to 30 minutes to complete, but I found myself getting quite caught up in their dilemmas. He's gonna kill him, Fitz! Let the guard handle it, guys. Now, originally, we didn't like the first episode of Series 1 that much, but after we played more of it and we saw those decisions play out, we absolutely warmed to this series as a whole. There are still some frustrating elements that carry over into this DLC, though. Why is it that you never had a girlfriend again? <laughs> Some of the voice acting is still a bit subpar, and that pulls me out of the moment. Also, there are some clunky controls and limited interaction. Yeah, I agree that some of the voice acting was a bit dodgy, but there are some great performances in there too that just can't be overlooked. I'm keen to see which characters will carry over into season two. I gave this eight and a half out of 10 rubber chickens. I'm definitely enjoying this series much more now, so I gave it seven out of 10. Well, heck, should we go answer some questions at the Ask Good Game Desk? Oh, certainly. Hmm. Okay, well, let's get to it. Uh, first up, we've got this one from John in Gosford, New South Wales. Hi, John. Will that new car game called The Crew be multiplayer cross-platform in any way? E.g. PlayStation to Xbox, PC to PlayStation, PS3 to PS4, etc., etc. Also, when will it be released? Thank you in advance for answering. <laughs> Well, John, I'd have to say that's a yes, no, maybe situation. I know that's confusing, but basically, yes, there is a confirmed cross-platform part of the game, which involves a mobile app, and that will let you customise your cars and that kind of thing. As for cross-platform play between the main platforms, well, that info hasn't been confirmed or denied, and there's a chance we'll see PC to Xbox or PC to PlayStation, so that's a maybe. So uh, let's move on to this one from Chris, uh, who is in Everton Park, Queensland. Hey! What's the go with 4K TVs and the PS4? I can't find much on the compatibility between the two or if I should just spend the money on a high-end massive full HD TV. What would you do? Ah, well, just quickly for those who don't know what 4K is, it's basically the next standard for high definition. So currently 1080p, or 1920 times 1080 pixels, is about as HD as you get, while 4K is going for a whopping 4096 times 2304 pixels. Oh, I can just imagine it now, Hex. All that resolution. <laughs> And Chris, what we've heard so far is that both next-gen consoles will support 4K video playback, but as for gaming, Sony has flat-out said the PS4 won't do 4K gaming, whereas Microsoft has said that the Xbox One can in theory, but in practice we're pretty sure that won't happen. I'd be very surprised to see any big AAA game in the next generation render at 4K. <laughs> I would eat my hat if that were the case. It would just be too much of a hit on the frame rate. As for what I would do, well, I would wait. 4K TVs are just going to be super expensive for the near future and there's just not much content that can take advantage of it. Not to mention, unless you're buying a huge 65-inch or larger TV, you probably won't see that much of a difference from 1080p anyway. Yeah, that's right. I'd wait a few years and let the prices come down and then upgrade. All right, well, uh, let's move on to this one from Corey in West Pennant Hills, uh, New South Wales. One, do you know if the new Halo on the Xbox One will also be released on the Xbox 360? Two, do you know if Cortana will be found in the new Halo? 
Well, Corey, we don't have a lot of info about the new Halo, but from what we do know, no, it's not going to be coming out on the 360. It's a brand new next-gen Halo made exclusively for the Xbox One. As for Cortana, well, we did see the Chief clutching the computer chip thingy that she always lives on when she's with the Chief, so we'd say that's pretty much confirmation that she's going to play a role in the next game. OK. All right, well, that was short and sweet, so let's move on to this one from uh, Hit Girl in New South Wales. Hi, good game. Just wondering if there will be any more American McGee's Alice games or any other Alice in Wonderland. And what is your favourite game of the year so far? Well, Hit Girl, there's been plenty of rumblings about a new Alice game for a while, but nothing has been confirmed. Basically, the last we heard about it was they had plans for a third game to be called Alice in Otherland. But it seems like that plan has changed a bit since American McGee is currently trying to raise crowd funds to purchase back the film rights to Alice. If he succeeds, then he plans to turn Otherland into a series of animated films, which sounds great, uh, but we're not sure how a third game fits into that plan. As for my favourite game of the year so far, I'd have to say it's a tie between the two games that I've given a 10, really. It's mm. Tomb Raider and The Last of Us. Oh. Yeah, really for me too. Although I, I still think back to um, Call of Juarez Gunslinger. <laughs> it's just such a cool little, fun, small little Western romp. And I was really surprised by that game, which is probably why it sticks in my memory. Hmm. Mm. Well, anyway, I think it's your review time. Well, Hex, I actually had a thought. Maybe we can go back in time a little bit and look at reviews for a slightly older game. Well, back in time. Mm. Uh, what game did you have in mind? Well, since it's just come out recently for PS3 and Vita, I thought we should have a look at what people think of the charming little platformer Thomas Was Alone. Oh, that sounds good to me. Thomas Was Alone. Wow. A weird first thought to have. Well, it seems most of you loved it, much like we did, but I'm always fascinated by the haters, so let's see what people didn't like. Hard-headed here, who wrote, I thought it was a horror game till I played it, gave it five stars. <laughs> uh, likewise, Black Assassin uh, writes, For me, this game, was it scary at all because I love scary games? Five stars. Chris was pretty scared. But generally, it was all glowing praise, with Baron Von Chicken Pants here writing, I hate platformers and puzzle games, but I fell in love with this. Ten stars. Or like Xeno156, who says, A great story of friendship and different coloured squares helping each other reach greater heights. A truly touching tale. I absolutely loved it. Awesome job, guys. Just awesome. <laughs> Nine and a half stars. And Jeremiah seemed equally moved, writing, This game was just so perfect. I've played it three times now and still finding my heart pumping with emotion whenever I sit down. Even the baby boomers of my family think it's a touching game. I keep finding myself crying by the end. This game gave me a new perception of the world. That makes it amazing. No rating, but I'd, I'd say that's... I think we could count that as a 9 or a 10 out of 10, Hex. Uh, and Dylan here also got a bit emotional, saying, This game brings tears to my eyes. It's excellent. And anyone can relate to one of the characters. Unlike Chris, an easy 10 out of 10. Chris was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. Well, there you go. A very moving game about squares, but clearly not very scary. <laughs> so on that note, let's get back to the studio. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, I'm stuck on the chair. Oh, I can't get off. Let me help you. No. Never mind. Good game. Defense of the Ancients 2, or Dota 2, is a very complex game. Yes, and while we've dabbled in MOBAs before, we're certainly no experts. So when we played it, we decided to enlist some help. Uh, this is James, otherwise known as Dirt Nasty, and he's a friend of the show and an obsessive Dota player. And this is Toby. Oh, hey. Who is our mentor today, who's going to show us the ropes. So you have your support heroes, who I guess can be akin to healers or initiators, guys that are going to help you win your team fights and win your overall game. They're going to help the carry get gold, enough to get the items and levels he needs to be able to win the game for you later on. All right, well, I think I'm going to go Luna. So where's the guy I like? Yeah, there he is, there he is. Oh, look, he's a gnome. Nice. So if I'm doomed, what should I be doing? You're all just trying to do massive damage to each other. That sounds fun. All right, yeah, <laughs> There's a deny mechanic in Dota 2. You want to be last hitting their creep and denying them your creep. You're trying to get gold and you're trying to get experience quicker than them. I just Whoever. feel bad killing my own guys. We're dead again. Yeah, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sacrifices. <laughs> so what you really don't want to be doing is just standing there hitting their creep, because then you push your creep forward into their tower, see, like, where you are now. Because there's three of you there, so you're gonna push forward naturally, right? And you're gonna die. Dead. <laughs> Already dead. Oh, I'm not even a minute into the game. <laughs> <Fresh drop. laughs> 
Uh, typically, you want an initiator, who's the guy that runs in and starts the team fight. Right. And you want a guy, a tanky guy, so a guy that comes in, he tanks and absorbs all the damage, so to make sure your carries don't die. The main idea of this game is still to level up your hero, level up as a team, fulfill your roles, and you'll win anyway. Yeah. Damn, come back, come back, Bajor, come back. No, no, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! <laughs> What's Enjoying more it. important, boots or a helmet or... Get boots, my friend. Boots. <laughs> Goose is just shopping over there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Should I get shoes or a hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the tower is going down. Who are winning? Who are winning? Victory. Oh! oh it's a win! We win! Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> with friends is definitely the key and while I don't think this will become part of my permanent recreational games list because of the amount of time I would need to devote to it, I'm still riding the high of our win and I want to try more heroes. Yeah, me too. What I especially liked was how after each round I could see areas where I needed to improve but it was actually achievable and that's a really good sign. What I liked most though was actually seeing how much Dirt Nasty and Toby love this game. Yeah, Dota 2 players really show a passionate love for the game and it's easy to see why. It's just such a carefully well-made strategy game. Hmm. Good game. Well, that's all the pocket we have for this week, but don't forget you can tune in to our regular full-length episodes of Good Game on Tuesday nights at 8.30 on ABC2. Yes, and next time we'll be checking out the virtual reality of Oculus Rift. Until then, Bato out. Hex out.